contemporary acting sheriff here, my own nephew. Now then, how we doing, my little angels? Well, you're doing fine. The Dukes of Hazard, a beloved 1979 TV series, brought together a talented cast that became synonymous with the show's success. Let's delve into the casting process and discover how each actor was chosen for their role. For the role of Bo Duke, John Schneider was selected after a series of auditions. His boyish charm and southern drawl made him an ideal fit for the character. Interestingly, Schneider was only 23 when he began playing the 19-year-old Bo Duke. Tom Wopat, on the other hand, portrayed Bo's older cousin, Luke Duke. Wopat's prior acting experience in musical theater set him apart during casting. He was chosen not only for his acting skills, but also for his ability to sing, which was featured in several episodes. Casting the role of Daisy Duke proved to be a challenge. After considering various actresses, Catherine Bach ultimately secured the part. Her audition left a lasting impression, and her portrayal of Daisy became iconic. Despite not being a southerner herself, Bach adopted the characteristic Hazard County look by wearing cut-off jeans and go-go boots. James Best, a seasoned character actor, was cast as Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. Best's comedic timing and rapport with the young leads made him an excellent choice for the bumbling lawman. Finally, Sorrel Book, an accomplished Broadway actor, was chosen to play the cunning boss hog. Book's ability to embody the character's slyness and greed made him a perfect fit for the role. The casting directors looked for not only acting ability, but also chemistry among the actors. The success of the Dukes of Hazard hinged on the camaraderie between the leads, and the casting process ensured that the right mix of talent and personality came together for this classic TV series. We got you, come back. I can't talk now, but I sure need to see y'all in, in a real big... The Dukes of Hazard, a 1979 TV series, was brought to life by its director, Rod Amato. Known for his comedic touch, Amato aimed to create a light-hearted, action-packed show. He drew inspiration from classic car chase films and the rural South's culture, blending them seamlessly in this classic. Amato's directorial style leaned towards fast-paced, energetic scenes, emphasizing physical comedy and stunts. He worked closely with the stunt team to choreograph the iconic car jumps and chases, which became the show's signature element. The director's vision also included capturing the picturesque landscapes of Georgia, where the series was filmed, to add to the show's vibrant atmosphere. Collaboration was key to Amato's approach. He fostered a positive working environment, encouraging creativity and innovation from the cast and crew. With the cast, he focused on developing their characters' nuances, ensuring each role resonated with the audience. For instance, he worked closely with John Schneider and Tom Wopat, who played the lead roles of Bo and Luke Duke, helping them shape their characters' unique personalities. Amato's creative influences extended beyond film. He was inspired by the music of the South, particularly bluegrass and country, which often featured in the show's soundtrack. This choice added an authentic layer to the series, reflecting the region's rich musical heritage. In summary, Rod Amato's directorial vision for the Dukes of Hazard was marked by his comedic style, energetic stunts, and appreciation for Southern culture. His collaborative approach and creative influences combined to produce a timeless TV series that continues to captivate audiences today. American, let me tell you something. See these guys over here, I'm like them. I've always been against the establishment. The Dukes of Hazard, a classic TV series that first aired in 1979, has remained an enduring symbol of the industry. Its light-hearted storytelling, memorable characters, and thrilling car chases have captivated audiences for generations. But there's more to this show than meets the eye. Did you know that the iconic General Lee car, which was featured prominently in the series, was originally intended to be a Dodge Charger painted in a different color? or that the show's creators were inspired by the real-life exploits of the moonshine runners in the Appalachian Mountains. Throughout its run, the Dukes of Hazard has been the source of many funny, shocking, and even sad facts. From behind-the-scenes drama to unexpected connections to other classic TV shows, there's no shortage of fascinating stories to uncover. So what is it about this show that has made it such an everlasting symbol of the industry? Is it the enduring appeal of the Southern setting, the timeless themes of family, and friendship, or the sheer excitement of the high-speed car chases. Whatever the reason, the Dukes of Hazard has left an indelible mark on television history. And as we explore the many surprising stories and facts about this classic show, we invite you to share your own memories and experiences in the comments below. Do you have a favorite episode of the Dukes of Hazard? 
Was there a particular character or storyline that resonated with you? We'd love to hear your thoughts and memories about this beloved TV series. We are precious. Don't do it now. Don't do it now. Now remember, there's gonna be big boys in each car, so. The Dukes of Hazard, a 1979 TV series, brought viewers to the heart of the American South with its unique set design and filming locations. The show's creators chose Covington, Georgia, as the primary filming location, transforming it into the fictional Hazard County. To create this classic, the production team faced logistical challenges in filming car chases and stunts, as the show featured the iconic Dodge Charger, named General Lee. The car's distinctive orange paint job and the Confederate flag on its roof became synonymous with the series. Set design played a crucial role in establishing the show's atmosphere. The production team built the Boar's Nest, the local bar owned by Boss Hogg, and the Hazard County Jail, among other sets. They also designed the Duke Boys Farm, complete with an underground garage for their vehicles. Innovative techniques were employed to capture the thrilling car chases and stunts. The production team used a specially designed rig to film car scenes from various angles, ensuring dynamic and engaging footage. This rig, combined with skilled stunt drivers, contributed to the show's signature action sequences. Despite the challenges, the team behind the Dukes of Hazard managed to create an enduring TV series that captured the hearts of viewers, leaving a lasting impact on popular culture. So Y'all pay attention, because I ain't gonna say this but once. Now first, boss was hoping to st The Dukes of Hazard, a classic television series that aired from 1979 to 1985, remains popular among older adults today. The show is set in the fictional Hazard County, Georgia, and follows the adventures of the Duke family, who are always finding themselves in trouble with the law, despite their good intentions. The show's main characters are cousins Bo and Luke Duke, played by John Schneider and Tom Wopat, respectively. The two cousins are known for their driving skills, often using their iconic car, the General Lee, to evade the authorities. The Duke family also includes their uncle Jesse, played by Denver Pyle, and their sister Daisy, portrayed by Catherine Bach. The Dukes of Hazard was created by Jai Waldron and produced by Warner Brothers Television. The show's first episode aired on January 26, 1979, and it quickly gained a large following. The series' final episode was broadcast on February 8, 1985, after a successful run of seven seasons and 147 episodes. The show's success can be attributed to its unique blend of action, comedy, and drama. Each episode typically features high-speed car chases, humorous situations, and a resolution that reinforces the importance of family and community. The show's setting in the rural South also adds to its appeal, providing a glimpse into a way of life that may be unfamiliar to many viewers. Despite its popularity, The Dukes of Hazard has faced criticism in recent years for its stereotypical portrayal of the South and its use of the Confederate flag on the General Lee. However, the show's impact on popular culture is undeniable, and it continues to be a source of nostalgia for many older adults. In conclusion, The Dukes of Hazard is a classic television series that has stood the test of time. Its unique blend of action, comedy, and drama, along with its memorable characters and iconic car, have made it a favorite among older adults. While the show may have its flaws, its impact on popular culture is undeniable, and it remains a beloved part of television history. No, we won't, duty, not if the plan works. Besides, it's legal and law abiding. Well, I don't I... The Dukes of Hazard, a classic TV series, is well known for its thrilling car chases and comedic adventures. A significant part of its charm also comes from its lively score and soundtrack. The music, composed by the talented duo of Tom Wopat and John Schneider, who played Luke and Bo Duke in the series, perfectly complements the show's lighthearted tone. The score features a variety of country and bluegrass tunes, which capture the spirit of the rural South, where the show is set. The opening theme song, Good Old Boys, became incredibly popular and is still recognized today. The catchy melody and upbeat tempo instantly pulled the viewer into the exciting world of the Dukes. In addition to the score, the soundtrack features various popular songs from the 1970s and 1980s, these songs are often used to highlight the fun-loving and rebellious nature of the Duke family. For instance, Moonlight Feels Right by Starbuck is played during a romantic scene, while Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon is used to add a touch of humor to a chase scene. Tom Wopat, who also sang the theme song, shared that the music was meant to reflect the carefree attitude of the characters. He explained, We wanted the music to be fun and energetic, just like the show itself.
John Schneider added, the music is a character in the show, and it helps to tell the story. The composers also use music to enhance the emotional tone of the series. For example, during more dramatic scenes, the score becomes more somber and reflective. This contrast in music helps to heighten the emotional impact of these moments. In conclusion, the score and soundtrack of the Dukes of Hazard play a crucial role in creating the show's unique identity. The lively country and bluegrass tunes, coupled with popular songs from the era, perfectly capture the spirit of this classic TV series. What's it to you, Grandpa? Thank you, Grandpa. In an effort to promote racial diversity, the producers of the Dukes of Hazard cast Don Pedro Cali as Sheriff Little and featured African-American actors in key guest roles. However, this classic series was not without controversy. Jerry Rushing, who claims that elements of his life were used as inspiration for the show, and the later film sued for royalties and received an undisclosed settlement. Meanwhile, James Best and his wife had the opportunity to see Tom Wopat, his former Dukes of Hazard co-star, in the musical Chicago. Despite the legal dispute, the show remains a beloved part of television history, with many viewers cherishing the memories of watching the Duke boys' escapades in Hazard County. The show's impact can be seen in its enduring popularity and the way it has transcended generations. The cool train is fun to play with. And to think that he tried to arrest you two fine gentlemen. Well, listen. One of the most iconic scenes in the Dukes of Hazard is the car jump by the General Lee, the show's famous orange Dodge Charger. The stunt, which became a trademark of the series, was performed by stunt driver Craig Rutherford. He recalled, I would drive the car up to about 40-45 miles per hour, and then we'd let it go. It was a thrill, but also a lot of hard work. The scene's direction, by Paul Baxley, captures the excitement and danger of the stunt. The camera angles, including a bird's eye view, add to the suspense as the General Lee soars through the air before landing smoothly on the other side. The performance of the stunt, combined with the roaring engine sound and the country music score, creates an adrenaline-pumping sequence that leaves audiences in awe. Another memorable scene is the car chase in the episode Daisy's Song. The chase features the General Lee and a black Trans Am, with Daisy duped behind the wheel of the Charger. The scene showcases Daisy's driving skills and her courage as she outmaneuvers the police and the Trans Am driver. Director John Floria uses close-ups of Daisy's determined face and fast-paced editing to create a thrilling and empowering sequence. Catherine Bach remembered, I love driving the General Lee. It was so much fun to be a part of those high-speed chases. The impact of these scenes on the audience is significant. They capture the spirit of adventure, freedom, and rebellion that the show is known for. The stunts and chases are still talked about today and have inspired numerous imitations and homages in other media. In conclusion, the iconic scenes in the Dukes of Hazard are a testament to the show's enduring appeal and influence. Through expert direction, performance, and cinematography, these moments continue to resonate with audiences and leave a lasting impression. Back then in high school. Mama was right. I never should have come. She said he probably hadn't changed. In the popular TV series, The Dukes of Hazard, Harley Bear, the voice of Ernie Keebler on the Keebler Cookies commercials, made a guest appearance. James Best, who played Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, based the C.O. Co. sound Roscoe made whenever he got excited on noises he used to make when playing with his children. This was done to make Roscoe seem more childlike and less threatening to the Dukes. William Smith, who played the menacing boss hog, was rumored to be a record holder for reverse curling his own body weight. However, the correct weight he reverse curled was 163 pounds. Despite his intimidating character, Smith's physical strength was impressive. Mm -hmm. I don't know, they sure wasn't nice. Imagine committing a 104, a 927. Released in 1979, The Dukes of Hazard quickly became a beloved TV series, capturing audiences with its thrilling car chases, lighthearted humor, and family-friendly themes. The show followed the adventures of the Duke cousins, Bo and Luke, as they outsmarted the bumbling authorities in their hometown of Hazard County, Georgia. The series resonated with viewers due to its relatable characters and exciting action, the Duke Cousins embodied the classic American values of hard work, loyalty, and independence, making them easy to root for. Meanwhile, the show's high-speed car chases and daring stunts provided a thrilling escape for audiences. The Dukes of Hazard also had a significant impact on pop culture. The show's iconic car, the General Lee, became a cultural phenomenon, appearing on everything from t-shirts to lunchboxes. 
the car's distinctive orange paint job, and Confederate flag emblem became instantly recognizable, even to those who had never seen the show. Moreover, the series contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. While the show has been criticized for its use of the Confederate flag, it also challenged stereotypes and promoted a positive image of the American South. The Duke cousins were portrayed as intelligent, resourceful, and kind-hearted, countering negative stereotypes of Southerners as uneducated and bigoted. In addition, the show's depiction of law enforcement was often critical, with the bumbling Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane and his inept deputies providing a humorous critique of corrupt and ineffective authorities. This theme resonated with audiences who were growing increasingly skeptical of government institutions and authority figures. Overall, The Dukes of Hazard was a classic TV series that resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. Its enduring popularity is a testament to its enduring appeal and cultural significance. Hey, y'all, come on in here. Just got a problem. Looks like somebody's after him. What? In the early 1980s, a significant event occurred in the life of Christopher Mayer, who played Griff in the Dukes of Hazard. He was preparing for his fourth marriage before his untimely death. Meanwhile, R.G. Armstrong, known as Judge Hogg in the series, formed an unlikely friendship with Robert Beck, a former pimp turned author, as revealed in a documentary about Beck's life. During the production of the show, Catherine Bach, who played Daisy Duke, showed her loyalty by offering to leave with Tom Wopat and John Schneider, who portrayed Luke and Bo Duke. However, she stayed on set with Uncle Jesse, as the departure of all the main cast members would have meant the end of the show. This classic television series not only brought entertainment to its audience, but also left a lasting impact on the lives of its cast and those around them. You ain't got me mixed up with some other old fling. Well, now that's your thing. Released in 1979, The Dukes of Hazard quickly became a beloved classic, capturing audiences with its thrilling car chases, endearing characters, and southern charm. The show's impact was significant, leaving a lasting impression on popular culture. Critical reception was generally positive, with many reviewers praising the show's lightheartedness and entertainment value. In a 1979 review for the New York Times, John J. O'Connor wrote, The Dukes of Hazard is a cheerfully preposterous action series. He went on to describe the show as a throwback to the old days of television, when life was simpler and weekly cliffhangers were the norm. Similarly, Variety's review highlighted the show's rollicking good fun and high-energy action. The reviewer also noted the show's appealing cast and well-crafted stunts. Audiences responded enthusiastically to the show, with viewership numbers remaining strong throughout its seven-season run. The show's popularity led to a merchandising bonanza, with everything from toys and games to clothing, and betting emblazoned with the iconic General Lee logo. The Dukes of Hazard also received recognition in the form of awards and nominations. In 1982, the show was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Film Sound Editing for a Series. While the show didn't win, the nomination itself was a testament to the show's technical prowess and attention to detail. The show's impact was also felt in the world of music. The theme song, Good Old Boys, became a surprise hit, reaching number 21 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1980. The song, performed by Waylon Jennings, became synonymous with the show and remains a classic to this day. For those involved in the show, the accolades and recognition were a source of pride and validation. The show's creators, writers, and actors had set out to create a fun and entertaining show, and the positive reception from both critics and audiences was a testament to their success. In the end, The Dukes of Hazard remains a beloved classic, a show that captured the hearts of audiences and critics alike. Its enduring popularity is a testament to the show's timeless appeal and the skill and talent of those involved in its creation. Your own flesh and blood. Oh no. <coughs> in the television series The Dukes of Hazard, the original filming locations of Ace's used car lot repo men and the Boar's Nest have undergone significant changes. Both locations, once integral to the show's setting, have been transformed into churches. Sorrel Book, who played the overweight boss Jefferson Davis Hogg, wore padding under his suit to enhance his chubby appearance. His commitment to the character, even through physical means, showcased his dedication to the role. Parley Bear, another actor in the series, pursued his passion for drama at the University of Utah. 
His academic background in the field further underscores the caliber of talent that contributed to the success of this classic show. <laughs> hey, boss. Huh. During the filming of this classic, The Dukes of Hazard, the stunts were a significant part of the production. The Daredevil jumps in the iconic Dodge Charger, named the General Lee, were not performed by the cast, but rather by skilled stunt drivers. One such driver, Craig Baxley, later became a successful director. The show's rural setting in Hazard County was a stark contrast to the bustling city life of the cast and crew. Many of them, including John Schneider who played Bo Duke, learned to appreciate the simple pleasures of country life during their time in Georgia, where the series was filmed. Behind the scenes, the camaraderie among the cast was evident. They often spent their free time together, forming close bonds that extended off-screen. Catherine Bach, who played Daisy Duke, even had a hand in designing her character's iconic shorts, which became a cultural phenomenon. However, not all moments were easy. The production faced challenges, including a lawsuit from the car manufacturer Dodge, due to the extensive damage the General Lee suffered in each episode. Despite these hurdles, the show's charm and the cast chemistry shone through, making the Dukes of Hazard a beloved piece of television history. If you bring me back that necklace, you hear? Right, Mr. Lipton. And after you get it back, eliminate those... The General Lee, a 1969 Dodge Charger, is a central element in this classic television series. Interestingly, 1968 Chargers were also used, but their distinctive features were altered to resemble the 1969 model. Parley Bear, known for his role in the show, had an intriguing past. Before his acting career, he worked as a ringmaster for Circus Vargas and Barnum and Bailey. His connection with circuses persisted as he later served on the board of the community LA Circus and volunteered at the Los Angeles Zoo. In the winters, he even wrote publicity for Al G. Barn Circus. L.Q. Jones, another actor in the series, has been profiled in names you never remember with faces you never forget by Justin Humphreys. His contributions to the acting world extend beyond this show, making him a familiar face in the industry. The Dukes of Hazard, a 1979 television series, holds a significant place in film history. This classic show, known for its fast cars, daring stunts, and southern charm, left an indelible impact on the industry. The show's light-hearted, action-packed narrative style laid the groundwork for many future series and films. The Dukes of Hazard was one of the first shows to successfully combine elements of comedy, action, and adventure. Its unique blend of high-speed car chases, humorous dialogue, and family-friendly storylines proved to be a winning formula. This approach has since been replicated in numerous films and television series, demonstrating the show's enduring influence. Moreover, the show's iconic car, the General Lee, became a symbol of rebellion and freedom. The car's distinctive design and frequent jumps over obstacles inspired a generation of filmmakers. The high-flying stunts and car chases seen in the show can be traced in many modern action films. The Dukes of Hazard also played a crucial role in launching the careers of several actors. John Schneider and Tom Wopat, who played the lead roles, gained widespread fame and went on to have successful careers in film and television. The show's impact can be seen in the numerous spin-offs, remakes, and reboots it has inspired. In addition, the show's theme song, Good Old Boys, became a cultural phenomenon. The catchy tune, performed by Waylon Jennings, captured the show's spirit and further solidified its place in pop culture. The song remains popular today, often played on classic rock and country radio stations. In conclusion, the legacy and influence of the Dukes of Hazard are undeniable. Its innovative storytelling, iconic characters, and memorable stunts have left a lasting impact on the film industry. The show's influence can be seen in various aspects of filmmaking, from action sequences to comedic storytelling, making it a true classic. Taking the money from poor and needy orphans. William Smith, known for his roles in Batman, and the Rockford Files also appeared in the Dukes of Hazard. Despite being credited in the final season of Hawaii Five-O, he did not appear in the show's finale. On the other hand, Denver Pyle, who played Uncle Jesse in the series, had longevity in his genes. His brother lived to be 101, and their mother reached the impressive age of 104. Pyle was also related to Willis Pyle, an animator and painter, and Ernie Pyle, a cousin. Moreover, several country western stars made appearances on the Dukes of Hazard as part of Roscoe and Boss Hogg's celebrity speed trap. 
Waylon Jennings, Mickey Gilley, Buck Owens, Johnny Paycheck, Don Williams, Loretta Lynn, The Oak Ridge Boys, Roy Orbison, Hoyt Axton, Tammy Wynette, Donna Fargo, Freddie Fender, Dottie West, and Mel Tillis were some of the stars who graced the show with their presence. One thing standing in their way, that field has protected the people, County Commissioner J.D. Hall. In the inaugural episode of the Dukes of Hazard, One-Armed Bandits, a second General Lee is visible in the town square as the Dukes are pursued by law enforcement. Interestingly, James Best, who played Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, was let go from Universal in 1951 due to being caught with unfamiliar women on the studio lot while filming three unreleased movies. Years later, Tom Wopat, who portrayed Luke Duke, reunited with John Schneider, who played Bo Duke, on an episode of Schneider's Smallville in 2001. This classic television series continues to resonate with audiences even decades after its initial release. Here to be big brothers, didn't we? Yeah, and that carries with it a responsibility. You know, teach a kid right and wrong. Boy. R.G. Armstrong, known for his roles in Sam Peckinpah films, joined the Dukes of Hazard as Roscoe P. Coltrane. Before this, he worked with Peckinpah in Ride the High Country, Major Dundee, and Pat Garrett, and Billy the Kid. In the early 1970s, Bruce Lee offered William Smith a co-lead role in Enter the Dragon, but due to a scheduling conflict, John Saxon took the part. Smith later appeared in The Dukes of Hazzard as a different character. The Dukes of Hazzard started as three TV movies, which were later re-edited as two-part episodes for syndication. The movies, Carnival of Thrills, $10 Million Sheriff, and Undercover Dukes, aired in 1980-1984, respectively. Preston, he has to. But listen, I got everything under control. Uh, I got Enos out there looking for the Duke. In the TV series, The Dukes of Hazard, Dennis Haskins took on a different look to distance himself from his Saved by the Bell character, Mr. Belding. He grew a mustache to alter his appearance and avoid being typecast. James Best, who played Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, had a childhood friend named Frank O'Bannon. Their friendship went back many years before the show aired. Alan Autry, who portrayed Boss Hogg's nephew, had a successful career outside of acting. After the show ended, he became the mayor of Fresno, California, and is now the CEO of Autry Entertainment Group, a production company based in Fresno. In summary, the cast of the Dukes of Hazard had diverse backgrounds and interests beyond their acting careers. From mustache growing to politics, these actors brought their unique experiences to the show. <laughs> Let me just say that you are just as sweet as you see, Miss Fargo. The Dukes of Hazard, a classic TV series from 1979, brought us exhilarating car chases, endearing characters, and a slice of Americana. Did this show leave an impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories. How did the series make you feel while watching it? Did it influence your perspective on cinema or inspire you in any way? Share your favorite memories, be it the iconic General Lee or the memorable Duke Boys. Perhaps you bonded with friends and family over episodes, or maybe it stirred up nostalgia for a simpler time. By sharing your experiences, you can enrich our understanding of this classic and its impact on viewers like you. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's keep the conversation going. The boss ain't in Memphis, he's in Nashville, selling his interest in Loretta Lynn's recording studio. Uh, Cooter, I think he's over in